So if you don't know, Olive 0.1 has been my primary video editor basically since I gave it a proper shot during my video editor series. But unlike most updates, Olive 0.2 isn't just an update. Olive 0.2 is a complete rewrite of Olive because when the developer first started working on the project, he had no idea how to write C++ and a lot of the code base is an absolute mess. But along with that, he's also going to be fundamentally changing the way that Olive actually works. Changing it from being a layer-based compositing system like something such as Caden Live into being a node-based compositing system like, I believe, Adobe Premiere might be one of those. And I'm not going to be going too deep into the general Olive stuff in this video. The stuff that's the same between Olive 0.1 and 0.2. I want to focus on this massive, massive difference, as well as some of the little things that might have been changed. If you want to go hear my thoughts about the general same stuff, go watch my original video on Olive. Now, I want to make it very, very clear. Olive 0.2 is very alpha. During the couple of hours I was testing it, it crashed probably 15 or 20 times. So please do not use Olive 0.2 in production unless you manage to find a unicorn build which doesn't crash. I have not managed to find one though. But I want to talk about this application in the state that's currently in because I think the direction it's going is really cool and I want to give it a lot more attention so hopefully the developer can make some more money and actually spend more time on it and maybe other people can decide to actually help him out. But I will give it proper coverage when it is ready. So for now, let's get into compositing. With layer-based compositing, it is incredibly simple to understand and this is why a lot of the entry-level video editors actually use it. Basically, the effects are going to be applied in the order of the layers that exist. So let's say in this case we have the transform effect. If we then go and add a blur effect and then we add, say, a color correction. So it's going to go transform applied, then box blur, and then color correction. In some cases, if you have these in a different order, the effect is going to be different. For example, in Caden Live, if we go and crop a video and then increase the size of the video, that is going to be increasing the size of the cropped version. But if we go and swap those effects around and then we increase the size without changing the parameters, then do a crop, that is going to do a crop on the increased size version and the result is going to be completely different. This is a completely logical way of approaching effects because it's basically a chain of operations. However, in node-based, it doesn't make as much intuitive sense, but once you understand how the node graph actually functions, you'll realize that node-based editing is vastly more powerful. So if we go and add that clip in, you'll notice that every single element in the clip basically has something in the node graph that represents it. And not just in the clip, in the sequence and the project as well. But for today's video, we're mainly going to be focusing on working on individual clips. Now, every single clip inside of Olive is always going to have a transform attached to it by default. So clicking on that transform and then going over to the parameter editor, we can go and modify the parameters of that just like we could in Olive 0.1. We can do things like keyframing and stuff from here. The general things you'd expect to see in a video editor. But how do we add another effect? The first thing we need to understand is how stuff in the graph actually is connected. So if we click on this clip in the timeline, it's actually going to go and select everything in the graph that is affected by this one clip. And as we can see, all seven of these elements were selected. So because the transform is connected to the media and then the transform is connected to the video clip, what would happen if we say put another effect in between there? So to create a new effect, what we do is right click in the node graph, go down to the add section, and let's say we want to add a blur, for example. Click on the blur, and then we can go and create that. Clicking on anything in the node graph is going to tell you what it's actually connected to. So if we go and click on the clip down here, as we can see, the transform is connected to the buffer. So what does the blur have that might be similar? Blur has an input. So what would happen if we go and take this line, if we then go and control click on the transform, drag it to the blur, and drag it to the input. So that's obviously not going to work because it's not connected to the actual clip. But what if we go and connect that one up to the buffer? 
Now we'll see, we actually have two effects in play. And we can do this as many times as we want. So let's go and add another effect. Let's add, say, a crop. And let's get rid of this line. Drag from the blur into the texture. And then from the crop into the buffer. Now if we go and modify the crop, as we can see, we have the crop, we have the transform, we can do a rotation here, and we also have the blur, and all of those effects are in play at once. But as it stands, that's basically layer based with more steps. Where it gets really exciting is when you want to go and have repeated effects or repeated values. So let's say I want to have my transforms rotation and my blur actually being the exact same number. Obviously, I could go and set them at the same number, but instead of doing that, let's go and add in a new node and add in a math node. So we're going to add in the basic math node, and if we go and set, say, I don't know, a value of 70. Now, what we can do is actually drag this into the transform and drag it to the rotation and drag it on the blur and drag it to the, was it radius? Drag it to the radius. And now, as we'll see, both of those values are now connected to the math node. And if I go and modify the value up here, it's actually going to go and change both of them at once. That might not sound super exciting, but let's say I want to go and add the same blur effect to every single clip in my timeline. I can go and add a blur node to all of those and then connect them all up to the same math node and they all just suddenly have the same value. No need to like go and copy and paste values. It's just all the same because that's how the node's connected. The other really cool idea here is it makes it really easy to swap stuff around without fiddling around with the timeline. So if I wanted to do something like say, swap audio track one and audio track two, Normally what I would have to do is go and ungroup these, swap them around, and group them back together. In this case though, what I can do is see these two volume nodes here, I can go and delete the lines that are connecting those, and then just swap them around. And it's done. No grouping was affected, everything still works exactly the way it was working before. The implementation isn't perfect, you're supposed to be able to swap at this level, but if you go and delete the connection between the clip and the audio track, you won't actually have a way to re-add the clip into the track. And the application tends to just crash. That's just teething errors, the idea is certainly there though. One really interesting idea is that even gaps in the sequence are treated as nodes in the node graph and can be modified like any of the others and treated the exact same way with math and anything else like that. So if I go and add another clip, let's say we place it right here. As we'll see, there is a gap node here, a gap node here, and a gap node here. Now, ignore the way that stuff is actually being placed in the node graph. It's currently a little bit messy and needs a lot of work. So let's go and click on the video gap right here. That's connected to the video track here. And if I go and modify the length, as we'll notice, it's actually moving that clip independent of all the others. But because we are moving it like this, rather than breaking up the grouping, those actually are all going to still be grouped together. Because this isn't alpha, we can very easily break the graph. One of the easiest ways to do so is just add in a bunch of clips, and then as you delete the clips, you'll notice that the nodes don't actually get moved closer back together. It sort of just like puts a bunch of them off to like one massive side, and this is sort of inconvenient to work with. As I've mentioned, there's sort of teething issues with the graph, and other node-based editors have a more algorithmic way of actually moving the nodes around, making it so when things are sort of deleted, it brings things back together. So I'm 100% certain this can be addressed. Along with that, the hitboxes for the lines need to be addressed as well. So you might think that if we click on this line here, it'll select it. Perfectly fine. But what about the line directly above it? doesn't actually work. To go and click on that line, we have to click like up around here because this hitbox is sort of extending a bit further than it actually should. Now, I fully understand this being the case when you've like zoomed out and it's hard to work out exactly the pixel you need to click on. But when we zoom in like this, it should be very obvious where we're actually clicking. Moving around this node editor can be done with the middle mouse button, but one thing I would like to see is sliders on the side as well. Even if they're just optional to have there, I would like them to be there for people who don't exactly like this sort of workflow. I've been using things like Unity and Blender before, so this sort of makes sense to me, but I understand why this would sort of be a turnoff.
Along with that, there probably should be another way to do a zoom rather than going and pressing control and then using the scroll wheel. Maybe also having the option to say right click and do a zoom or say like control plus control minus when you're like highlighted on this section, something like that. While I wouldn't personally go and use it, I think having the option there would be very useful, especially in the case of the control plus. With the exception of the node graph, not much else notable has really been changed so far. The only super notable things are the fact that in the sequence, the audio tracks and the video tracks are now labeled. Why they weren't labeled before? I don't know. But now they're labeled, they have buttons on there which can be very helpful as well. Basic stuff that should have been there for a video editor. And the other really nice thing is that with the audio thingy over the side here where it shows you like what the levels are, it actually works now. In the older version of Olive, it would sometimes just freeze at one random value and just stay there forever. So this is much, much nicer. But sadly, uh, it sort of comes with the trade-off of the playback working at all. So there is some caching that is supposed to exist with the videos, like most video editors have, because loading the video as you're actually going to watch it is a big waste of time. And if you have excess RAM, you might as well use it. This one doesn't seem to ever actually load the things into the cache. And as you can see, uh, yeah, it produces a pretty bad result. Now, I want to very much stress this is not production ready. It's stabler than it used to be. It's only crashed one time during the recording of this video. And they have addressed the big problem the application did have, which is uh, it used to have a pretty bad memory leak where uh, my system with 32 gigs of RAM, if the video was over, I think, 10 minutes long, it would use all of the RAM literally all of it, and then because it can't load anything else into RAM, it would just stop. Now, it caps out at 24 gig, which is still a lot, but it's a much bigger improvement. However, we understand it's alpha software, so ignoring all of that, if you like the idea of this node-based video editor, and you actually want there to be a node-based option that exists on Linux, because I think this actually is the only one. I highly, highly suggest going and supporting the developer. He doesn't make that much on his Patreon, and I'm sure he would appreciate every extra dollar he would get to speed up the creation of this project, because this guy is working on the project at least a little bit every single day. That's going to be basically everything for me. Let me know what your thoughts are on node-based editing in the comment section down below. Do you think it really makes any sense? Would you just prefer to do layer-based? Do you just not care about video editors whatsoever? And you're just watching this because you'd like to hear my voice. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That'll be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D, Stephen T's, through Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support, we'll work the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, limit, pay, all that sort of stuff. But please go and support the Olive developer. He deserves the money much more than I do. I've also got my gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T, uploads on Thursday on YouTube, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.